Hello everybody. In this video, I want to give you guys some guidance for completing the molar mass of solute using freezing point depression lab. Let's start off by taking a look at the PDF for this lab. And I think it gives a pretty good overview of exactly what we're going to do right in the introduction for this lab. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the temperature of the solvent alone when it freezes or melts. And we're going to measure the temperature of a solution that we're going to prepare when we've added a solute to our solvent. And we're going to know the mass of the solute that we add and we're going to know the mass of the solvent that we have. And we're going to calculate the difference in temperature between the solvent alone and when we make a solution out of it. Then we know that our freezing point depression is going to be uh, determined by this equation here. We're going to know the Kf of our solvent. And what we're going to want to solve for is going to be the molality of the solute. When we do a little rearrangement to solve for the molality of the solute, you can see that that's the temperature divided by the Kf. And we're going to get uh, our molality. Then we're going to take the molality that we just calculated and we're going to multiply it by the mass of the solvent. This is a measurement that we made in kilograms. And that's going to tell us how many moles of solute that we added. But we also massed the solute that we added. So we know what mass we had. So if we take the mass of that solute that we added and we divide it by the moles of solute that we just calculated up here, we're going to be able to get the molecular weight of the solute. The tricky part about this lab is how do we determine exactly what the freezing point is uh, based on the data that we're going to have. So we're going to be measuring the temperature as time goes on and we're going to be looking at it as it's cooling here and, and uh, we're going to see that we're going to get to like some inflection point and then it's going to like change a slope over here. And right here is the point where it froze. And seeing roughly where it is is fine, but we need to do a little bit of math to get a really precise number for this. And to do that, we're first going to need to plot out the temperatures versus uh, the time. So now I want to go back to the report and we'll take a look at what that data looks like so here this is for the pure solvent in this case it's steric acid we've got time here and we've got our temperature over here in degrees celsius and i am lazy so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and highlight all this make sure i get it all highlighted and i'm going to copy that and then I'm going to come over here and open up my Excel and I'm going to click down on A2. I'm going to right click and I have some pasting options here and I want to get rid of that bolding. I don't really like that that much. And I also want to make these columns a little wider for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight some of them here. I'm going to grab them. I'm going to pull them over. They all get a little bigger. And now I'm going to throw in some labels for these columns. So over here I have time with units of seconds. And then here I'm going to have temperature, units of degrees Celsius. Now what I want to do is I want to plot this and just get a look at what it looks like. So if I click into that top one there, so you can go about this two ways. You can click here and you can just drag all the way down to the bottom if you want. But if you have a really big data set, a nice little trick is you can go to this cell. You can hold down shift and push over. And then you can hold down control and shift and push down. And it's going to highlight the whole thing for me. And if you go down thousands and thousands, then you're kind of going to want to do that. So after we've got them highlighted, we're going to go to insert and then we're going to go
go up here to XY scatter. We're going to pick this guy right here. And we get our graph right here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make this a little easier to look at. Uh, you know, the defaults in um, Excel really aren't great. So I'm going to click on it. And I see that I now have this chart design thing up here. I'm going to go over here to quick layout. And I usually just use this guy right here. I'm also going to bring it up here. I'm going to drag it down. And I'm going to get a good look at it. Now, we have, if we look at this axis, we're not using a lot of our graph here. We want to look a little closer at this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change this axis right here a little bit. So I'm going to pick a line right here at 60. That's underneath all of my data points. And if I look up here at 90, that's all above my data points. So if I click on that, you see it highlights around that axis. I can right click and then I can go to format axis. And a little pane is going to open up over here. And I'm going to make the minimum here 60. And I'm going to make the maximum, well, it automatically corrected it to 90 for me. And now we're kind of zoomed in a little bit more on our data. And now we have to make a uh, judgment call. And that judgment call is where do the points on here, where we can clearly see we have one kind of slope, uh, meet the ones over here? Like what two points are on either side here? Okay. We're going to call this side our cooling side, and we're going to call this side our freezing side. So I would say this one right here is probably the first one on the freezing side, and this guy is the first one on the cooling side. If you had a little bit more different judgment, maybe you want to come over here between these two, that's fine. It's really not going to affect um, the outcome that we have here. So once I decide where that point is, I go ahead and look at it and I see that it says uh, series 1.510, 51070. And if I come over here, I know that now that that's this point right here. So all of these points above it, I want to be in one series. And all of these points below it, I want to be in a different series. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So in order to achieve that, what I want to do is I want to just click again at one of these points. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to select data. And this is kind of a mysterious dialog box that they've never really uh, fixed up and made very nice for us. But these are our data series. So this is the different uh, data points that when they're grouping them together, that's what it is. A series is a group of data points. And we want two of them. We want one for the cooling and one for the freezing. So we already have one series here. So I'm going to hit edit. And I get to this box right here. And I'm going to give it a name. This is going to be all these points right here. We said we were going to call those cooling. So you can just type in cooling. The easiest way to select the data after that is going to be to just erase all of this and then come over here and just grab the points that you want. And so our X is on the left and our Y is on the right. So for X here, I'm just going to grab all these points. And then for Y over here, I'm going to grab all of these points down to the 5, 10, 70 points that I uh, decided was going to be the barrier between these two. And I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to add a new series. I'm going to call this one Freezing. I'm going to grab all those points below my difference point there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to erase this mysterious equals one here. And I'm just going to grab all these guys here. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit OK here. 
And I see now that they're plotted uh, differently here with the blue ones here and our cooling curve here and then the freezing curve over here. Now we can add, when we click on one, it only highlights the ones that are in that series. If I click on this one, it's only going to highlight the ones that are in that series. And I can add the trend lines independently of one another. So let's start doing that. I'm going to click here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to add trend line. I want a linear one. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to display the equation and the R squared value on the chart. And you see, I get it right here and it's real, it's real small. So we'll just pull it over here. We're going to triple click in there. And we're going to make it a little bigger. We'll, we'll use like size 18. We want to be able to see this guy. And then another thing I like to do is I like to come in here and I'm going to color it blue. So now I can see really clearly that this is the equation that's associated with this blue line here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this side. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go for, add trend line, linear. I want to display the equation and I want to display that R squared. I'll grab it, bring it into a sensible position here. I'm going to make this big. Oop, I didn't get the whole thing. And then I'm going to color it orange so that it matches up with this guy over here. And now I've got uh, my two uh, equations and uh, they don't draw them out any further, but I can see that my these two lines are going to meet, you know, somewhere right around in here-ish. So I'm looking for a value that's going to be somewhere around 500-ish seconds, which is a nice little sanity check before we move forward. Now we can inspect these values and start answering some of the questions in the report. So the first question is, what is the slope of the cooling portion? I'm going to put this guy right up here to the edge, if I can get it right. Yep. I'll put this guy over here. There we go. I'm going to move this over so that I can kind of see it while I'm looking at my questions. So we have the slope of the cooling portion, which is going to be this value right here for our first cooling curve. This is the one where we have just the pure solvent here. Uh, we're going to mention which time we chose. So we went to 510 seconds here. Uh, then you're going to have that slope value right there. The y-intercept is this plus 85.275 right there. Here we're going to say what is the first point in our freezing. We chose that would be the 541. That's this point right here. Uh, and then the final time is going to be the very last one, 900 seconds. That's what we added in there. The slope of that freezing line is going to be this 0 0.0008. The y-intercept of the freezing portion is going to be 69.859. So all of the uh, previous values we got just by inspecting the graph. And now we need to make a couple of calculations where we calculate the time at which the two lines intersect and then uh, the calculated freezing point. I gave you the equations for these in the previous video, uh, but I'm going to show you how you can use Excel to go ahead and do those calculations too. So first we want that intersection time. It's going to be the point where these two lines meet and it's going to come down to, it'll be the point on this axis. And then we're going to calculate uh, the freezing temperature in degrees Celsius. And I'll even spell temperature correctly for us. 
So the intersection time from the equation for this from the previous video, we're going to say that this cell equals, and it's this intercept minus this intercept um, first. So that would be B2 minus B1 if you're following along from the previous video. And then we're going to divide that by this slope minus this slope. So I'm going to do negative 0 0.0318 plus, because I'm minusing a negative here, 0 0.0008 and I get a time of 497 seconds, which is right around that 500 point where I said that it should be. Now to calculate the freezing temperature, we could take either one of these two equations and just plug in this X value because this is X here. Uh, we can go ahead and we'll do in the other video, I did the first one, so let's do the second one and show you that that works too. So I'll just say that equals negative 0 0.0008 times this cell right here. I don't have to retype it. I can just click that plus 69.859 and I get a temperature of 69 and a half degrees. And if I kind of trace this over here, I say, well, yeah, that's just below that 70 line. That looks pretty good to me. And those will be the values that you fill in for here and here. And then you go through and you do the calculations that we just talked about to get the molality and the uh, molar mass. And then you can go ahead and upload your Excel sheet. And you don't have to use Excel. You could use like a Google Doc or something like that too. Um, you could take a little screenshot of it and stick it in there for me. You know, I don't really mind which uh, program you use. And uh, and that's pretty much it. I think um, I think you guys will be able to be successful in this now.